Welcome to Sectors Up Close, I'm Elena Casas. Today we're talking about the US financial sector with John Stolfus of Oppenheimer Asset Management. The S&P financial sector has been lagging the wider market. It's up 8.29% year to date as tech accumulates most of the market's gains. A return to lower interest rates should boost bank margins, but the current high rates could still spell trouble. After a series of regional bank failures a year ago, the spotlight lately has been on commercial real estate holdings amid fears of rising delinquencies in the sector. Regulators warned last week that the number of weak banks has risen by 18%. Well, to take a look at the health of the sector, I'm joined now by John Stolfus of Oppenheimer Asset Management. John, hi, thanks for joining us. To start with then, more broadly, the prospect of rate cuts is starting to attract money back into the banks, isn't it? Yes, it is. The, the markets, of course, are a discount mechanism, so they, they price forward uh, 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 what they believe is going to happen forward. In, in our viewpoint, we think the Fed is likely cut rates this year, uh, probably a maximum of, of one to three times uh, if it does that. We think inflation remains sticky, but the Fed has already said that it expects that it will do some cutting. So we'll have to somewhere there, we'll, we'll see what happens. But if we get net, if, if we get the, uh, the yield curve to steepen to a more normal uh, rate, we'll get net interest rate, uh, a margin improvement, and that's very good for banks. The problem right now is at the short end of the curve, the rates are higher than at the mid and, and the longer, and the banks need to borrow uh, short and lend long, and that's how they make their profit and encourage them to lend. So we look to that and think that with a normalization of the economy, is what the market is looking at, and it attracts us to the uh, the financial sector. There is, of course, as I mentioned, though, also the problem of them finding bad loans on their books, particularly in the commercial real estate sector, which almost brought down New York Community Bancor in recent weeks. Could this be a wider problem? Well, you know, that that's where the distinction between the major banks uh, in the U.S. versus the regional really counts. Uh, and the problem appears to be thus far, from, from what we can tell from the, the analysis of it, uh, appears to be idiosyncratic rather than systemic and mostly tied to the regional banks. And that space is where the, the potential problems are. There have been a couple of things with, with the larger banks in terms of lending uh, and backing lending with uh, a, a debt that was at historically low uh, interest rates on short-term deposits, at least one big bank did, but it's not, a, it's not a problem within the sector. To stay though with that loans issue, is there a risk of another smaller bank failure in the US, do you think? With, according to Goldman Sachs, $1.3 trillion in commercial mortgages that will need refinancing this year. And the vast majority of those, as you said, on the loan banks of smaller American banks. I think it's very possible, Elena. It, it, it's one of the reasons why uh, we we uh, point out that the 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 opportunity that it appears to be less risky at this point is in the big banks, the uh, rather than the regionals. But again, with the regionals, our expectations would be for more aggressive investors that they would have opportunity there because it just doesn't appear systemic. It changes from market to market, uh, city to city, how people commute to work. Plus, you have uh, within the area of distressed debt buyers uh, and, and distressed asset buyers, there's great appetite at times like this, which will likely ameliorate uh, the amount of drama we see in this area. What about the broader risk to banks, John, of a bumpy landing for the U.S. economy caused by sticky inflation? How much should investors be worried about that? Well, that's something you always have to account for. Uh, as you know, I've been in this business for, for I can't believe it, but for over 40 years. Uh, and, and as a result of that, I've been through quite a few rate hike cycles and rate lowering cycles. Uh, and if, if inflate, it, inflation is insidious and it's problematic, it takes time to get, it just, it's just not a Fed funds hike cycle, it happens and it just goes away. 
it's a psychological thing as well as related to issues that could be surrounding supply chains. So it, it you know, it is not that it is not uh, opportunity without risk. And we always like to say wherever opportunity is, you will see that risk lies close to it. And wherever there is risk, you'll find that opportunity uh, lies. And it's up to the investor and their advisors to judge how much is commensurate with one's uh, tolerance to risk. John Stolfers of Oppenheimer Asset Management, thank you so much for that insight. And that's your look at the US financial sector. I'm Elena Casas and this is Reuters.